and welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. And I'm Chris Costa. So Chris, what would you like to talk about today? Well, I thought I'd like to be able to buy it or set up a material item in inventory, set up as maybe per thousand, but buy it in a, a pallet or a skid. Can we have two different methods like that? Sure. You can do that um, mm -hmm. in the inventory item, in inventory or in standards, wherever you set it up. Mm -hmm. um, there is a button called the PO Info button, and okay. that's what will let you define how you want to purchase the item. Mm -hmm. And then in the material itself, itself, you would set up how you want to sell the item. Okay. Okay. So let's sure. let's take a look at that example. I have an example in my database of a paper that I buy uh, sell per thousand, and I mm -hmm. buy by the case. Perfect. Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to open inventory. And I'm going to go down and select a sheet stock, and I'm going to go down to my bond paper, and I'll select this first paper. So you can see I have this particular item set up with a costing method of per M. And what you would do is first, in the estimating unit cost, if I edit that cost, I have the unit cost, which is my per M price that I'm going to sell it at. But then I also have a price here as my PO unit cost. Now what you would enter here is the cost for a unit that you're purchasing it by. So mm -hmm. in my example, I'm purchasing it by a case. So I have $75 because that's the price of a case. Okay. If you're going to buy it, buy it by a skid, you'd put in the price of one skid. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So with that set up, I can then go under this PO Info button and define how I'm buying it and purchasing. So in the description, I can enter however I'm buying it, case, skid, roll, whatever that might be. And then under the purchasing costing method, you have two choices, per each and per M. So in this case, I'm, I'm putting in the price as per each case. So I set it as per each. And then the purchasing factor, in there you'll put in the number that is how many sheets of paper are in a case or a skid or whatever mm -hmm. you're buying it at. Okay. And then that factor will be used when you receive it to um, multiply the quantity times that factor. And that's what will go into your inventory mm -hmm. count for your on hand. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. So let's take a look in purchasing. Sure. So I'm going to get out of inventory, and I'm going to go into purchasing. And I do have a purchase order already set up for this material. I'm going to edit this item. And you can see I have a quantity of one. It brings in the costing method of per each. But it will bring in the unit cost of the $75, which is my per case price. Right. Okay? okay. So now when I change the quantity, if I want to buy two cases, it'll multiply by that $75. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so on the PO, two. they just enter a quantity of how many cases they want to buy. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. I'm going to go back to inventory first. Actually, I can edit this button and go to status and look at what I have in inventory. Right now, I have 5,700 um, sheets of paper in inventory. So say now I am um, have issued that purchase order and it's come in and I want to receive it. I'm going to go over to the receive screen, click on add to receive. I'm going to receive just one, one case. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to click OK. Now that should have put 5,000 into inventory. So let's take a look. If I go back and edit the PO and I click on the status button, I now have 10,700. Right. So it added 5,000 sheets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Works great. Is it fair to assume that roll stock would be the same way if I want to buy one roll, but inventory and number of feet? Sure. Let's take a look at that. Square inches or something like that? Yep. You could mm -hmm. do it by hundred weight, by square inches, mm -hmm. by feet, but then be able to but buy it by roll. buy the one roll. Yeah. Right. Let's okay. take a look at an example of that. Okay. So let me go back into inventory. And I'm going to look at an example I have in roll stock. Let me find my item, my test roll. This roll, I'm selling by the linear foot. It costs a dollar per foot. But say, in my roll, you'll see I have my average fee per roll set at 1000 So my PO would be $1,000 for a roll. So that's the cost. If I go into the PO Info button, I set my unit description as a roll. My costing method is per each, for per each roll. And I want to put 1,000 feet into inventory for each roll. So now I will go into purchasing. And I have one set up here with this roll. So let me edit that, edit the PO. And you can see I have my quantity of one, my unit description of a roll, 
and my cost is $1,000 per roll. Let's order two of these. And let's look at the status right now. Right now, I um, don't have any rolls set up. Actually, let me just change one value in my inventory. This particular inventory item was set up as roll-to-roll -roll inventory, which mm -hmm. we will discuss in another, um, in another WebEx. I'm going to okay. uncheck that. What that would do, the roll-to-roll -roll inventory would let you keep individual rolls with roll IDs. Mm -hmm. We'll discuss that in, in, in the next one. WebEx. This Good. one we're going to inventory it by feet and sure. keep it by feet. Okay, makes sense. So I'm going to change that. Go back into purchasing. And now you can see it doesn't say rolls there anymore, but it shows right. my quantity on hand. I, ha I don't have any in stock. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm ordering two rolls, so let's go into the receive screen. I'm going to add the receipt. I'm going to add two rolls of 1,000 feet each. Now if I go back into the item and I click on the status button, I have 2,000 feet in inventory. Yep. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Makes sense. So it makes it easier for your purchasing agent to purchase it, mm -hmm. but then you can still sell it by the linear feet or True. per sheet. Yeah. No, it looks like there's sheet. a lot of flexibility with there. So. Yep. Yeah. Do you have okay. any other questions? No, I think that was very good. Well, thank, thank you. you. Okay. And thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. And I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.